this contour. That's the left pulmonary artery. We've already seen that the right pulmonary artery kind of runs left to right in front of the trachea. Um, the left pulmonary artery is going to run front to back. And it, you see there's the, there's a, uh, you can sort of see it, there's the left uh, main bronchus. It's the airway. The left pulmonary artery is going to go over, over front to back and make an arch. So it almost makes an arch that parallels the aortic arch, which you can see better here. It sort of runs front to back like an arch. Where the, that's the left pulmonary artery. The right pulmonary artery, which we see partially, runs more or less right to left in front of the trachea. We pull away our eye in the sky, fade away, and pull up the chest x-ray, and you can see the left pulmonary artery is running front to back more or less over the bronchus, whereas the right pulmonary artery runs more right to left. So we've cut away a little bit. You can see the right pulmonary artery running right to left, right behind the superior vena cava. The left pulmonary artery is running sort of front to back, harder to see there until we rotate it. Let's see. And we rotate. You can see the left pulmonary artery running front to back, almost parallel, paralleling the aortic arch, but a little more inferiorly. Here is this patient. This is abnormal. We had this patient come up previously. This is a person with pulmonary hypertension from fibrosing metastinitis. tinnitus. We see that this bump in that region is too big. If you use your imagination, you can see that the left main bronchus is sort of bowed down, displaced down. The main and the left pulmonary artery are too big. Again, this patient has fibrosing medius tinnitus. It causes uh, fibrous tissue builds up around the vessels. In this case, this person had a lot of their peripheral pulmonary arteries narrowed. It caused their, caused their main pulmonary artery to get big. Also had pulmonary vein obstruction, which will come up later. Here's the ventilation scan. You inhale radioactive material. It goes to your lungs. The dark area in the middle is the cardiac silhouette, and the white area on the side are the lungs. You can see that, the, that there's decreased ventilation to the left lung. You have to use my, you have to believe me a little bit. It should be brighter than that. And if we look at the perfusion scan, this is a perfusion scan, that there's very, that this white glob on your right, on your left, on your left, the patient's right, is perfusion to the right lung. The, on the left lung, there's almost nothing. This person had their left pulmonary veins obstructed by this fibrosing medius tinnitus, and so the body was reflexively shunting less pulmonary artery blood that way. This liver uptake also indicates that there's abnormal shunting, that blood is instead of going to the lungs, is being detoured and making its way through other vessels that it's winding, that this tracer, technetium 9 mmmag which is a microaggregative albumin, it's a blood tracer, was going to the liver. So this person had multiple branch stenosis causing central pulmonary artery enlargement. It shows up more on the left side. Here's an angiogram. This catheter is in the left pulmonary artery. It's supposed to be injecting the left vessels, and they're supposed to fill up nicely. Here you see the right pulmonary artery goes out, and you can see that the right pulmonary artery, a lot of these vessels get very narrow. We'll see another injection here in a second. The right side, and the your, your left, the patient's right, there are a lot of narrowings. It's, they're harder to see on the left. Your, these left vessels don't look as bad. There's left perfusion in the left lung because, and it doesn't show up here, their left pulmonary vein was obstructed. Let's go fade away, go to the CT scan. Again, a lot of collateral vessels on the right side. That's from a superior vena cava venous obstruction. You can see in this case, the liver is super white. Contrast is being shunted there. The main pulmonary artery is big. It's what makes that contour and why we're talking about it in this case. Those are collaterals from the uh, venous obstruction. We rotate around. We're seeing the right pulmonary artery branches coming into play. They are peripherally narrowed. We're going to rotate around and now we see the left pulmonary artery branches. They're not as narrowed. The pulmonary veins are narrowed on this side so there's not perfusion to the left lung. But you can see how fat that left pulmonary artery is, the main part. And it's rotating around. It's going to come back to the frontal and you can see how that bump is the main and left pulmonary artery and it's, it's what causes that cardiac silhouette. Coming around again one more time. Get a good look at it. The 
multiple brain stenoses. All right, here's a different patient. Again, we're talking about the left pulmonary artery. We can see the aortic arch. It has a little bit of rim of calcium, which causes a sort of a faint white outline around it. And then in the region of the left pulmonary artery, there's a big mass. Again, the most common thing in a situation like this, you, I mean, it'd be common or it'd be possible this could be a mass like a lung cancer or adenopathy, but we're trying to show cases that show abnormalities of the cardiac and vascular structures. This is a 65-year-old female with a history of congenital pulmonary valve stenosis. A lot of people don't make it to 65 without that being detected, but she did. A very large left pulmonary artery. The left pulmonary artery is more or less in line with the main pulmonary artery and the pulmonary valve. So here, this is the pulmonary artery, it bifurcates. You can see that the main pulmonary artery and the valve is more or less in a straight line to the left pulmonary artery. So if you have a stenosis, a narrowing of the pulmonary valve, it's more likely to make, it preferentially makes your left pulmonary artery big, not as much as your right because of the big, the jet that hits there. Pulmonary valve stenosis gives prefer preferential enlargement to the left pulmonary artery. That little clip, in case you're wondering, is just part of a sternotomy wire, a wire of, a, of her chest having been opened previously. See, that's just a sternotomy wire. We peel back, we peel back, and here you can see this very big left pulmonary artery is making that silhouette that we saw in the chest x-ray. Rotate around. Big left pulmonary artery makes an arch, in this case, bigger than the aortic arch, which kind of runs superior to it. Pull in the lateral, there she is. Okay, here's another one. This is not normal. There's a space there. There's a gap there. That's odd. In addition, normally this border is made by the right atrium. Here it's being made by the spine. The whole cardiac silhouette is shifted to the patient's left, to your right, the patient's left. If we look at this cross-section of a CT scan, we see the aorta and the pulmonary artery, and there's this little wedge of lung between them, and that's not normally there. Normally there's a membrane that, called the pericardium, which holds the heart and the great vessels, and lung doesn't poke in there. This patient has congenitally absent pericardium. It causes, it causes this, I'm back up, causes this abnormal space and causes the shift to the left. So it's not really a pulmonary artery problem, but it's an example of an abnormality in that region where the left pulmonary artery should normally be. It's actually displaced a little bit because the pulmonary valve, because the pericardium, the pericardium isn't holding it together normally.